The debate over net neutrality has taken a twist with telecom companies lobbying for a level playing field over certain services. These telcos have demanded that companies or products offering voice calls over the internet be asked to adhere to the same rules and free structure that's applicable on similar telecom services. Malvika Jain dials in. Telecom companies are refusing to give up without a fight. With barely hours to go before the expiry of TRIA's deadline for the submission of views on regulating over-the-top content or OTTs, telecom companies have banded together to ask for same rules for same services. Simply put, they want application service providers which offer voice services over the internet. We are not talking about guys like WhatsApp Voice, Skype and Viber to be subject to the same rules and regulations as telecom companies themselves. CAI's latest representation asks that adherence spans from paying government levies to meeting KYC norms. Somebody asked the question, do you want licensing for OTT? Far from it. At the end of the day, the OTT business and the OTT world is actually what gives us growth for the mobile internet. All we are saying is that when it comes to communication services, which are basic voice services, there must be the same rules. You must subject, uh, you know, we, are, we have the rules of, of, um, uh, of meeting security obligations. We've got to pay license fees. We've got to pay different kinds of taxes. We've got to pay rural infrastructure development fund. The rules must be the same. Because this artificial arbitrage that's created by different rules is actually going to lead to a situation where investments will either get compromised or data rates will go up. This representation comes even as telecom companies launched a Sapka Internet initiative, their answer to the Save the Internet campaign launched by OTT developers and social media users. Telecom companies argue that their initiative echoes the views of rural subscribers who are likely to favor sampling of Internet services. Then there's the threat of higher tariffs for telecom subscribers. Industry has to decide, government has to decide that would you want data rates to go up to levels of fixed time and all our customers are going to be have comprehensive bundle of voice and data. But I'm going to remind you that there is a debate for 86 million customers versus our customers, the 950 million customers. The rural customers that we currently own today own a device, don't own a smartphone. If the same rules were not to apply, then the only way this industry can be viable is the data rates would be 6x of where they are today. After that, you can do what you want, you can use VoIP, it really doesn't matter. But with that arbitrage in mind, given the different rules, we absolutely need the issue that Himanshu talked about, which is this is not a game of just 85 million broadband customers. We are serving 950 million customers. And if you take the data rates up to 5x, 6x, a lot of people in India will never use the Internet. And I think that's the challenge. But COAI is quick to add that this is not an attempt at ending net neutrality, but at promoting net equality. After all, telecom companies are now asking that the licensing regime they are subjected to be applied to OTT players as well. TRA's deadline for public comments may be done and dusted, but the debate over net neutrality is not. The stakeholders now have until the 8th of May to submit counter views to the comments received so far. In New Delhi, Malvika Jain. The net neutrality debate rages on. The telecom minister has said in the past the committee will send its report by 9th of May. There's fresh trouble for the 